Did you know that your mindset has a big impact on how you deal with uncertainty and maybe affecting your reaction to not just the current crisis, but any life challenge that you're going to face? I'm Dr. Judd Brewer, addiction psychiatrist and neuroscientist specializing in anxiety and habit change. Let's dive right in. I bet you've seen something that I've been observing over the past month. In the face of fear and uncertainty, some people seem stuck, even paralyzed by all of this, while others are stepping up. Some are even stepping out of their shells, surprising themselves and others by what they're capable of doing in the face of danger. Why is that? We have all been forced out of our comfort zones. The million dollar question is what happens when we're out of that comfort zone? Do we run back seeking safety in the familiar? Do we panic and accidentally run the other way into the proverbial panic zone where our brain shuts down? Or do we plant our feet firmly in our current reality and step up to the challenge? This may have to do with something known as your mindset. Have you heard of Dr. Carol Dweck? She's the Stanford researcher who coined the terms fixed and growth mindset. She coined these decades ago based on her research into how kids and adults respond to challenges. Dr. Dweck describes fixed mindset as when you believe your basic intelligence and abilities are unchangeable. You've got what you've got and you have to utilize them as best you can. Growth mindset, on the other hand, is a belief that your abilities can be developed and improved over time. Dweck has been studying mindset for decades. According to one definition, a mindset is a set of assumptions, methods, or notations held by one or more people or groups of people. Or simply put, it's a person's worldview. Our mindset or worldview can be so habitual that it colors how we interpret events. It influences choices we make and how we learn. It can even contribute to what's called mental inertia or groupthink, when individuals with similar worldviews come together and start feeding off of each other. Think mob mentality here. In other words, mindset is a big deal. How do we develop a particular mindset? Here's a hint. It has to do with reward-based learning. Let's use a simple example, say chocolate. If you get stressed, that's the trigger, and you eat chocolate, that's the behavior, and you feel a little bit better, that's the reward, your brain learns something. If you're stressed, you should eat chocolate to feel better. I think of this as learning to see the world in a certain way. We put on our chocolate colored glasses and walk around so that the next time we're stressed, our brain says, hey, eat some chocolate, you'll feel better. That's where sayings like she wears rose colored glasses and he wears dark colored glasses come from. These are euphemisms for people who always see the world a certain way. Rosie suggests that we're always seeing the world from a glass is half full, and dark is the glass half empty worldview or mindset. And yes, you can learn to wear chocolate or worry or any other type of mindset glasses. The more you wear them, the more you forget that they're on your face. They become a part of your identity. So the concept is pretty simple. You learn to see the world a certain way based on your previous experiences. Each time you do something that reinforces your learning, the lenses of your worldview glasses get a bit thicker. Dweck has mostly studied mindset in education and school settings, but her work is pretty relevant for, well, just about everything we do, because mindset colors how we see the world. Dweck is famous for describing the two types of opposing mindsets that I've mentioned already fixed and growth mindset. According to Dweck, individuals can be placed on a continuum according to their implicit views of where their abilities come from. If you believe your success is based only on innate ability, basically what you were born with, you would fit into the category of a fixed mindset. On the other hand, if you believe that progress is based on hard work, learning and training, you're said to have a growth mindset. What mindset do you identify most with? You might not even be aware of your habitual mindset, whether you're more on the fixed or the growth end of the spectrum, but you only need to look as far as your behavior to get a sense of what it might be. This often becomes very clear when you look at your reaction to failure, for example. Fixed mindset individuals dread failure because it's a negative statement on their basic abilities, a reminder of their inherent limitations. On the other hand, growth mindset individuals don't mind or fear failure as much because they realize their performance can be improved and learning comes from failure itself. This makes sense because if you have a worldview that you're born with your particular intellectual capabilities, for example, every time you fail, it's a reminder of how limited you are. 
oh, I can't do any better. This is as good as it gets for me. On the other hand, if you're more on the growth mindset spectrum, you can see failure as a learning opportunity instead of as a failure. Let's use walking down the sidewalk as an example. If you're in fixed mindset and you're walking down the sidewalk, you trip on something and fall down, you might beat yourself up for being clumsy. In the same situation, if you were a growth mindset person, you might say to yourself, hmm, I tripped. What can I learn from this? Should I tie my shoes more securely or pay closer attention to the sidewalk? In a growth mindset, you can even question the notion of failure itself. What does it mean to fail? If I learn, does that count as failure? Dweck even goes as far as arguing that growth mindset will allow a person to live a less stressful and more successful life. This also makes sense because in growth mindset, you're always learning and literally growing from your experiences. In her book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, Dweck advises if parents want to give their children a gift, the best thing they can do is to teach their children to love challenges, be intrigued by mistakes, enjoy effort, and keep on learning. That way their children don't have to be slaves of praise. They will have a lifelong way to build and repair their own confidence. I love her phrase, enjoy effort. It's kind of hard to enjoy what's happening when we're clenching our teeth together as we try to force something to change or as we beat our heads against the wall. But what happens when we start loving the challenge, getting intrigued by the mistakes themselves? I find it helpful to extend these concepts to your direct experience so that you can use awareness to help you move into growth mindset instead of getting stuck in fixed mindset. To get a sense of how to do this, explore the following. What does your body feel like when you have a fixed view or are closed to someone else's idea or their feedback to you about your own ideas? You might have noticed that it literally feels closed down, like you're protecting yourself from different information getting in and thereby contaminating your worldview. As I talked about before, this feeling of closed downness may have evolutionary parallels. When you're being chased down and cornered by the proverbial saber-toothed tiger, your job is to close down into a tiny little ball, as small a target as possible, so that you can protect your vital organs. What does it feel like when you're in growth mindset, on the other hand? You're literally and figuratively open to new ideas. Can you feel that in your own experience? Only in growth mindset are you open to learning. You can practice this today. I've broken it down into three simple steps. If you find yourself outside of your comfort zone, step one, check to see if you're closing down in fear or simply the discomfort of things feeling different. That's why it's called the comfort zone after all. We feel comfortable because things are familiar. Take a moment to see if you're in unfamiliar territory. Step two, see if you can feel into that closed down restless feeling urge to move. Can you get curious right in that moment about what discomfort feels like? Check in with your body and mind. Oh, this is discomfort. You can even use the trick I taught you earlier about opening your eyes really wide. Oh, I'm out of my comfort zone. Step three, remind yourself that this is an opportunity to learn. Remind yourself of the best teachers, mentors, and coaches that you've had in your life and how you've grown when they've encouraged you to step up when challenged. Bow to this opportunity as a sign of respect. Bow to it as a teacher and ask, what can I learn from this? Can this experience help you expand your boundaries and grow the size of your growth zone and even help you cultivate a growth mindset as a new habit? I'll end with two great quotes that I absolutely love. Running away from any problem only increases the distance from the solution. And there are no great people in this world, only great challenges which ordinary people rise to meet. So let's all rise to meet today's challenges, whatever they are. Onward, together, see you tomorrow. If there are topics you'd like me to cover, post them in the comments section below or tag me on Twitter at Judd Brewer. Subscribe to this channel to get updated when I post new videos and please share this video with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you.